Bill here. I'd like to talk about pins. In this position, the rook is a pinning piece. It's pinning the knight, the pin piece, to the king, the screen piece. So pins happen on the lines, and they can be done by rooks, queens, or bishops. In this position, the bishop pins the knight to the king. When a piece is pinned to a king, it's an absolute piece. The piece cannot move off the line of the pin because it would be in check. If instead the knight was pinned to a queen, that would be a relative pin because even though you might lose the queen if you move the knight, it might still be worth it. It's still legal. A partial pin is when a piece can still move partly. In this case, the black rook pins the white rook to the king. The white rook cannot move sideways, it would be into check. But the rook can move up and down and even take the rook on the same line as the pinning piece. So that's a partial pin. So rooks, bishops and queens might be in a partial pin. Okay, so the rook moves and it was quite legal. Okay, so here's an example of a partial pin with a bishop. So the black bishop pins the white bishop to the king. But the white bishop can still move. Okay, so here's a, um, a pawn being pinned on a diagonal. So in this case, black is moving up the board, so the pawn could take the pinning piece. So here, here we have something called a double pin. The white rook pins the black rook to the king. It's an absolute pin and it's a partial pin because this rook can move in, along the rank including taking the rook. So what white does is move the queen to pin the rook to the queen. So this is a relative pin. So the rook could still move. He could uh, take the rook but then he loses his queen. It turns out that it's not possible for uh, black to defend the rook. A self pin is when you make a move which pins a piece. So in this case, white moves the bishop to get out of check and the, the bishop's in a pin. And another another way to self pin is to do a king move which puts you into a pin. Here is something called a cross pin. The bishop pins the queen to the king defended by a pawn. There is an escape however because white moves his own bishop pinning the pinning bishop to the king so the bishop even though it may, may be able to take the bishop it can no longer win the queen so that's called a cross pin so so there's different kinds of pins sometimes the piece that does the pinning is weaker than the pin piece in this case the bishop's weaker than the rook in some cases they're of the same value as in this case some some cases the pin piece is lesser Okay, so we'll have a look at some ways to get out of a pin, which is called unpinning. So in this position, the black bishop pins the knight to the king. So there's lots of ways to uh, get out of the pin here. We could exchange off the, or capture the pinning piece. We could move a piece between the pinning piece and the knight. We can move that pawn up. We can move a piece between the king and the knight. Or we can move the king. So that's no less than four different ways to unpin. Okay, so that's one of the ways. That's another way. That's another way. And that's another way. Okay, so this time we've got a, um, a pin. And sometimes when you have a pin, rather than taking the piece straight away, you build up on it. So rather than taking, taking it and just swapping off so it'd be an equal exchange, white moves up. An extra piece. Now he's got three attackers and two defenders, so we'll be able to break through and win material. So here's another example building up a pin. Rook pins the knight to the queen, so we just move the bishop up and attack it. So they say pin it and win it, so the piece won't run away, so sometimes you can bring up a further attacker or, or two to win the piece. So here, queen pins the knight to the queen, so we bring up the bishop and win the knight 
or here king attacks the knight so you bring up the bishop to, to uh, pin the knight and win it here we double up rooks to win the knight here is bring up the knight to attack the pin knight which is pinned to the queen here we double up on it to win the knight here we move the rook to pin the knight to the queen and win it here we pin the queen to the king winning the queen so doubled rooks or can be effective when making pins so now we've got a funny situation okay so white would love to play pawn to queen but can't because the rook pins the pawn to the king so what white does is he gives a check the rook moves back and then he sacrifices his own queen for a rook because at the end of it he doesn't care because now the pawn is no longer pinned so he can uh, win the queen so he made a, a net gain of uh one uh, rook so that is one way to break a pin okay so now now we've got an interesting move here so we, we can make a pin the bishop to the queen so the king comes up to defend now there's a fancy move here which drives the king away so he so we give the queen a check and black thinks if i move the king i'll lose the bishop so he puts the queen in the way and now the queen is in a pin as well as the bishop so there's nothing defending the bishop except the king so the bishop takes it, and strangely enough, the queen can't take it back. Even though that's attacked twice, it is quite safe. So white wins a piece. So this is the same thing, but with a uh, well, similar sort of thing. So um, the bishop pins the bishop to the king. So we do a cross pin, and now the bishop is lost. Best move for black is to take the bishop, where he loses queen for bishop. Okay, so now white sees his chance and pins the knight to the king, winning it. Now here's a rook in the corner. So at the start of the game, all the rooks are undefended. So white traps the rook because of the pawn takes the knight. The rook takes the rook because the pawn is pinned. Okay, so now, now we've got a funny position where I found this in a book once called The Art of Attacking Chess where uh, the bishop pins a rook to the king and of course white doesn't want to take it he wants to keep the, keep the uh, pin now the funny thing is if the rook moves away and if white wins the rook it's a draw with bishop against the rook so the black king is tied down can't move because he loses the rook this rook can only move up and down on the d-file so it turns out and and um, turns out white can repeat bishop moves turns out the position is a draw despite black being more than a rook ahead so this is what you call an unbreakable pin that can never be broken okay so now here's, here's another example of double pin the white rook pins the black rook to the king it's a partial pin so he does the double pin now the rook takes the rook white wins the undefended queen so another example of a double pin, so the queen moves up, pinning the rook to the queen. And here we have a sacrifice followed by a pin, so white sacrifice exchange, pins the knight to the king, king defends, now the knight can't run away so we just move the pawn up and win it. So the net gain for white is he won bishop and knight for a rook, which is a good exchange. And now we have... If this rook wasn't here, we'd have a nice pin, bishop pinned to the queen, pinning the queen to the king, guarded by the pawn. So we think, how can I, what can I do with the rook? So I'll sacrifice the exchange, which is not that big a sacrifice, and now the square, the square is empty, so the bishop now pins the queen. So now we'd like to do a bishop f6 pinning the queen but we've got the knight defending the square so we'll just start off by sacrificing the exchange and now we can pin the uh, queen to the king now we've got a funny situation so there's a way of breaking through here because we'll sacrifice the exchange it doesn't matter how black takes there's either going to be a pin or a skewer so it takes that way and it goes into a pin so Black's got quite a few pieces lined up here, and, and White's got two rooks which can get to the back. So it starts off with sacrifice, and it doesn't matter what way Black 
takes. The queen gets pinned, so white gains material. Okay, next one. So we'll start off with a sacrifice the exchange and follow up with a pin. Winning material. Now we have, if the bishop wasn't here, we'd have a pin on the uh, the file. So we start off by swapping bishop for knight, and then we've got, got the pin. And that's the end of pins. So we had a look at some of the basic ideas of pins. Okay, so uh, thank you for watching.